everybody. I wanted to take some time today to revisit a topic that I first introduced last week when I talked about the great new hidden DAX function column statistics. And I wanted to take some additional time today because in the time since I put out that video last week, I've done a lot of experimentation and learned some really interesting new things about how this function works and what you can do with it. Um, so last week I talked about some static uses. Um, today I'm going to talk about some really pretty amazing dynamic uses of the, the function in ways that even IntelliSense is not yet up to date on. Um, so to review from last week, column statistics, um, it takes no arguments and what it does is it produces for every table and field in your data model, it produces a, a table of six additional fields that has table name, column name, min and max value for the column, cardinality, and max length. And that doesn't seem like a lot of data, but there's a tremendous amount you can do with that. And what I've done here is place that into a smart narrative uh, table. So what we can actually do with this I've learned is we can actually do real-time monitoring of the metadata on our data model. And I want to show you why I think that's so, so valuable and useful. Um, the data that I'm currently using is just the practice data set for the Enterprise DNA external tool. And it's, it's a relatively simple data model. It's just six, six tables, five dimension tables, a fact table, and a measure table. Um, and that is not that hard to, to keep track of, but if you think about something like the most recent data challenge um, with Enterprise DNA, the F1 data challenge, um, that is a much more complex data set. Monitoring the, the metadata for that data set, I think, becomes a lot more important in terms of looking at cardinality, which is the number of unique values within a, um, within a field, and that has a big influence on the size of your model as well as potentially the speed of processing. Um, in addition, as you're building a model, it's often very helpful to know not just the number of tables but the date range of those tables so that as you build out your dates table, you're making sure to cover the, the full range of data in, say, your fact table. And so what I wanted to show you was in this, in this current scenario where we're working with column statistics, what we can do is actually let's add a table to this, this data model. So we'll go into Power Query and we'll go New Source, Blank Query. And then we'll go into the advanced editor. And I'm just going to paste in a, a function that's list.dates. And we're going to use that to create a, a table of cardinality of 10,000. So 10,000 unique dates. And if you remember from looking at the initial statistics, currently the highest cardinality table is the sales table with about 8,000 um, cardinality of 8,000. So let's paste that in. And if we do that, it's going to return a 10,000 item list. And we can just convert that to a table. And then rename that table to, let's just call that, uh, let's just call this table test. And we can change the, the field up here to date. OK, and now if we close and apply, what we're going to see is that Smart Narrative is going to update dynamically, which in the past, in order to update metadata, we always had to refresh the, the entire model. But in this case, now we see the model has seven tables, and the highest cardinality table is now the test table. And 
The reason that this is, this is fully dynamic is we're doing it all with measures. And I can show you how that is working. And the interesting thing, as I mentioned, is that, like if we look here at number of tables, is that it shows a lot of errors. And the function is so new that IntelliSense is not picking it up properly. But it actually does work. And so what I want to do is go into Tabular Editor 3, which I think is the best way to figure out what complex tax measures are actually doing. And so we'll just let that chug through for a minute. Open up. And we'll kind of pull this apart in pieces to see what exactly is going on in these measures. So the first measure that we want to look at, and you can see here it's got three three red dots on the, the measures table to indicate that there are errors in these measures. And the fact is that there aren't, um, but it's just, again, the IntelliSense and Tabular Editor is picking that up as an error as well. So if we if we take this, this measure, and we copy this over into a DAX query, and if you remember, DAX queries return tables rather than scalars. So we copy this over, and we start it with evaluate. Whoop. Go to the top here, add our evaluate statement. OK. And that's showing an error now because the result here is still a scalar. But what we can do is we can use the kind of the, de the debugging approach of replacing that return result with individual components of the measure. And so in this case, what we first want to do is replace it with call stats, which what we've done here at the top is just put that column statistics function into a variable. And so if we take a look at this and hit F5, we get exactly what we expect, which is that standard column statistics table. And it, it is table name, column name, min, max, cardinality, and max length for every table and field within the, within the data model. And so what we want to now do is we want to just look at the table name column and we want to take the distinct values out of that and count those. And that's going to be the number of tables in our data model. So the first thing we want to do is do a select columns on our call stats table and just return that table name um, field. And typically in a, in a DAX measure or a DAX query, you want to return a, a, a field name with the table name in front of it. But in this case, we don't know what the, the appropriate table name reference is because it only exists virtually and it doesn't seem to accept the, the variable name as the, as the table name. So in this case right here, we, we've got just a what looks like a measure but is actually a column reference without the table reference in front of it. And that, that still works even though it's confusing in the nomenclature. So if we, we replace this return statement with our tab column and hit F5, we get exactly, again, what we expect to, which is that model tables um, field. And then for the result, what we're doing is we're just doing a count of the distinct table columns. So actually, if we replace this with distinct table column and hit F5, there we get our seven tables. So the original six tables and the, the test table that we added. So then when we run a count of that, count rows, it's just going to give us seven. And that's exactly what we what we see if we go back to Power BI in our smart narrative. Clear the stacks out. Seven tables. So let's take a look at the, the highest cardinality and the, the highest cardinality table 
and see how we got those. So if we go back into Tabular Editor 3, and this is, this is actually an important pattern that you can use for a lot of different things where you're looking for not just the, the max number, but the max attribute associated with that number. So let's, let's take a look at the max cardinality first. And we go to the expression editor, and we'll take and copy this over into our DAX query. And we can just copy over this since we've already extracted what we need from, from that original DAX query. So again, we've got the variable call stats is our column statistics table. And what we've got here is just the max cardinality, which is the call stats table, the max of the call stats table of the cardinality field. And we can check this, even though this is a query, and we need to run up here and put our evaluate statement in. And one of the tricks you can use in debugging is, even though this is a scalar, we can turn it into a one cell table by just putting brackets around it. And if we hit F5, we'll see that's the cardinality value of 10,000 that we're seeing in our smart narrative. So now the question is, how do we take this and return the table associated with that cardinality? And what we've got here, if we go to our expression editor, is a very common pattern that we use to do this. And let's take this into our DAX query now. So we'll just bring that over into the existing DAX query, copy over that. And again, we've got our call stats in, in a variable. And what we've got here is, is the interesting construct. So what we've done is we've taken the max x of the, the top row of the call stats table based on cardinality, and then just returned the table name. And let's, let's take a look at this, because it's, it's, it's got an unexpected result in here. Um, so if we take this, this portion of the measure, this table portion for top N1, and we copy this into the return section over the max cardinality. And we hit F5. What we oh, what we've got to do first is we've got to always place that evaluate statement. Okay, and we hit F5. And what we see is instead of getting one row, we actually, even though it's top N1, we get two because there's a tie. And this is the this is the row we were expecting to get, the the, the ten thousand date column. Um, what Call stats also does is it creates for every table kind of an index in a hidden index row called row number um, with that being a unique identifier for each row of the table. So that max cardinality is always going to be mirrored by the, the row number um, if that is a unique identifier. And so it doesn't really matter here that we've got two rows because what we're looking at is the max of table name. And that max is there just to return some, some value that otherwise this would just be a naked column. Um, but we need, to, we need to put some aggregation around that. And in this case, we use max. We hit F5 on that. And then if we go back and return this to max cardinality, And remember again that we need to put this in brackets to return a table rather than a scalar. And we hit F5, that returns the, the value of test. So this is a really good pattern to remember when you want to basically figure out a, a max or a min value and then return an attribute associated with that, that min or max. Um, so if we go back to our original Power BI, um, we can see that we've got some additional measures here. 
that return the the min and max fact table date. And there's there's a whole range of additional measures we can monitor um, here. But I think I've I've given you kind of the the general approach and context that we can use in terms of you making best use of, of that uh, column statistics measure column statistics function in a dynamic way. And just again to to prove to you how dynamic this is, let's take and just delete this test table out of the model. Um, delete that from the model and we want to confirm delete and now watch this. Without refreshing the model at all, it then now returns six tables and it goes back to our highest cardinality table being sales with that 7,991. So in terms of a complex model, being able to to track this dynamically, I think there's tremendous value in that. And I think the more we, we experiment with this column statistics and the ability to dynamically handle metadata um, within DAX, I think the more interesting uses we're going to find. So if you've already found some interesting uses for that, please let me know in the comments. Um, and as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us, and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.